What's going on guys, Zach here, and welcome to the long-awaited Java game development tutorial number 13. Today what we're going to be looking at is adding textures into the game by popular choice within the comments section of our last uh, video. Now the reason I've been so uh, long for this uh, video to come out was my hard drive had crashed and I needed to get uh, it restored, and it was just a whole long process. Uh, but now I'm here, I'm ready to go back at some Java tutorials and um, would definitely like some suggestions for you. But for today, we're going to go ahead and pop in a sprite sheet into the game. So first thing I'm going to do is go into paint.net here. And I understand that there is a plugin for uh, creating sprite sheets within paint.net. Uh, what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to sort of create my own sprite sheet because I don't want to install anything. So here I'm just going to uh, do this and this and then make it that color. All right, and now I'm just going to say, we'll just do 128 by 128. No, it doesn't have to be large. All right, and I'm just gonna stack it just like this. Like I said, there are plugins for paint.net or I'm sure in Photoshop you can create a quick script for it. We're not creating a very big sprite sheet here so it shouldn't be an issue to do this. All right. And then one more row. So these are 32 by 32 which are players 32 by 32 and our enemies are 16 by 16 so what I'm gonna do here is and please don't judge me on my art I know it's awful I'm aware of this we're gonna go ahead and just create a little guy here let's make it all like that and let me zoom in a little bit more all right and then we're gonna Create a little smiley face there, perfect. All right, so that's gonna be our main character. You know what, let's just put a rectangle around him as well. All right, now we're gonna create our other enemies. So here I'm just gonna get a 16, I believe it's a 16 by 16. Let me look in the code real quick. Um, which we had under, it's been a while, hard enemy. So yeah, 16 by 16, all right, cool. So let's see. There we go, 16 by 16 square there. We'll make it red. That's our first enemy type. I'm gonna put over here in the second sprite sheet. Now we could stack it like this, and so we could put all of them into the same exact sprite sheet. But just to optimize it for now, within our sprite sheet class that we create, we're going to be able to call it by rows and columns. So if we can just call column three instead of putting in a specific magic number, so to say, it's gonna work out better. Um, but when we are creating that script, it, you can see where it will be easy to change that if you'd like. All right, we're just gonna make it blue. And then we'll create one more. Because I believe we have one more enemy type. I'll we'll make that yellow. All right, so that's kind of what they look like. Here's gonna be our three enemies in the game, our player, and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this into, uh, I'll put in my pictures here, or videos. 
and I'm just going to name it sprite underscore sheet. And in our Eclipse, we're going to go to properties. And in our res folder, actually, you know what? Yeah, we can just put it straight into our res folder. So let me go ahead and just drag the sprite sheet into our res folder there. So if it doesn't show up, go ahead and hit F5, and that will uh, refresh refresh it for you. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and create a class. We're going to name it Sprite Sheet. And this class here is going to take our Sprite Sheet and crop it down for us on the certain images that we want to take from the Sprite Sheet. So first thing I'm going to do is create a buffered image. So private buffered image. I'm going to name it Sprite. Control Shift O to import that. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the constructor for it. And inside the constructor, I'm going to call buffered image SS. And inside here, I say this dot sprite equals SS. And that's so uh, whatever we put into this sprite sheet class, which will uh, be our sprite sheet, then it just converts basically our buffered image that we created up top here will be our sprite sheet. It will have all that data sent to it already through the constructor of the sprite sheet. So here we're going to create a method public. It's going to re return a buffered image. We're going to call it grab image. And inside this grab image class or method, I'm sorry, we're going to have a, uh, a parameter int col for column, int row, int width, and int height. All right, and it's yelling at us because it wants us to return a buffered image. So here what we're going to say is buffered image img equals sprite.get sub image. And here's what I was talking about with the rows and columns. So this is the exact coordinates, width, and height that we're going to grab from the sprite sheet. But I'm just going to put some code in to make it so that we can just easily put rows and columns into it. All right, so here I'm going to say row multiplied by 32 minus 32 and then here I'm gonna say column multiplied by 32 minus 32 and in here I'm gonna say width and height and then we're gonna return that image all right so pretty simple that's gonna be it for our sprite sheet all right now what we're gonna do is create one more class and we're gonna call this buffered image loader and this is going to be the class that we call to load our sprite sheet All right so here we're going to say buffered image image and then in the uh, buffered image method that we create called load image we're going to give a string of the path and here we're going to return whatever image we want to load Right, so I'm going to say image equals um, image io dot read get class dot get resource path, and then we're going to return that image, and we're going to um, surround that with a try and catch. All right. So pretty simple class, all it does is it loads our image for us. So now when we go into our game class, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a private buffered image. We're gonna call it sprite sheet. We're not gonna equal it to anything. We'll just leave it null for now. And right under the window, we're gonna go ahead and load our sprite sheet into the game. So I'm gonna say buffered image loader, I'm gonna call it loader, equals new buffered image loader. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna say sprite underscore sheet equals loader dot load image. And then here we're gonna give the path. So since it's in our res file, I think we should be all right by just saying forward slash sprite sheet dot png. All right, so let's start the game and see if we have any issues. 
cool. We don't have any issues, no errors are coming up or anything. So we should have successfully loaded our sprite sheet into the game. Now, in order to use this sprite sheet, I'm gonna go into our player class here. And inside here, we're going to add in our sprite sheet. I'm gonna call it SS. All right. Actually, you know what would make this easier is if we went ahead and just made in our game class this initial sprite sheet public and static because we're only going to have one sprite sheet in the game. So it doesn't really matter if we make it static because there's no confusion. There's just one single sprite sheet that we're always going to call from. All right. So in our game class, then we can say uh, sprite sprite sheet ss equals new sprite sheet and it's going to want um, it's going to want the buffered image which is going to be our sprite sheet so here we can say game dot sprite sheet all right and now here we can say if we create just a private buffered image and we call it uh, player underscore image we can say player underscore image equals ss grab image and this is going to be column one row one with 32 height 32 all right so now we've loaded in our player image from our sprite sheet which column one row one would be this guy here and then we're going to go down to our draw method or our render method and say g dot draw image uh, here we are going to say player underscore image. This is going to be X, this is going to be Y, and this is going to be this. Um, all right, I believe this should be null, and these need to be casted to integers because we changed all the X and Y values over the floats. All right, there we go. So now let's repeat this with our enemies. So here I'm going to go into our hard enemy. Uh, actually, let's start with uh, our basic enemy. And we basically repeat the same thing. So here we're going to say enemy underscore image. And we need to tag that with a buffered image. Sprite sheet SS equals new sprite sheet game dot sprite sheet and then we're going to say enemy underscore image equals ss dot grab image and here for our basic enemy is going to be column two row one so column two row one and the width is going to be 16 by 16 and then down here if we just take our player class and copy it change that to enemy underscore image. I'll repeat this for the fast enemy as well. So I'll just copy this over. Private buffered image enemy underscore image. draw this and then we need to change this to column three and then the last one is our hard enemy private buffered image enemy underscore image control shift o and then draw it. And then here, of course, we need to say four because this is in column four. 
All right, so with all that, let's go ahead and run the game. Let me turn that down. Let me turn that off, actually. All right, so we've got no errors or anything yet, which is good. So if we hit play, oops, and we select normal, and we get an error. All right, what I had to do was just take this buffered image loader and our sprite sheet that we are creating and put it at the very top of the constructor so this is the first thing the game does is load up your sprite sheet all right so and then what i also did was on our fast enemy and our basic enemy i went ahead and took out the handler out add object with our trail just so we can see the sprites because if not then it would be creating those squares over top of um, our image All right, so here we have our player and our little square that we can't really tell what it is because the art didn't really reflect it, but you can put anything in there that you'd like and it all works. And uh, hold on a second, it might look like the fast enemy is using the same image as the basic enemy. So let's go ahead and see what's going on with that. We're grabbing the third image and our basic. Looks like we're grabbing the second image. Unless I got these mixed up here. Um, and this should be one and this should be three. Let's try it. All right, so there it is. So I just got it mixed up with the rows and columns. So now you can kind of see the art a little bit better. So that's going to be it for today. Leave a like, go and subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see next in the series. Definitely don't want to end it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.